Mm, good day, Tragic here, and welcome back to Legends of Andor. We are playing Legend 2, Long Live the Kid, King, not Kid, <laughs> Long Live the King, and this is uh, day one. Okay, we did the setup video, I went through everything. Just a quick recap, the King is deathly sick. He's fallen into this deep trance. So we've got to fend off the continuing attacks from the horrible monsters, but really what we're trying to do is find the witch who's somewhere out in the foggy marshes of the wetlands of Andor, and she's going to send us on a mission to go get this flower, and then we bring the flower back, cure the king. That's the goal, curing the king. So it's kind of like uh, Sethanon, you know what I mean? So we're channeling our inner mid -chemia and <laughs> let's get into this. One thing I will do, though, is when I did the original setup, see, what happens is in this game, uh, we, we're we playing four players, and in this game, you this game is designed to be played with four heroes. The actual rules of the setup uh, says that heroes have to start in certain spots. So what I did, because I'm running two heroes that come from the actual expansions, they didn't have starting locations listed, so I put them in the starting locations of the previous heroes that are missing. And that's kind of like a house rule that I use to preserve the original setting of the of the original quests. But there is actually a rule for them that changes the way that happens, which I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just change it to do their correct inverted commas starting locations, just because I get a lot of slack for always, you know, doing house rules. <laughs> so basically, each location, starting location, is actually based on their rank. So the dwarf is in location 7 because he is rank 7. So this guy is rank 22, and this guy is rank 29. So I'm just going to put him into spot 29, and 22 is here. So it's sort of basically the same, but uh, now it's correct in inverted commas. Okay, so let's go straight into this. So the turn order is determined by rank order, like so. So let's get into this. Uh, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and now right down here. It's going to take us seven hours. That's a whole day for the dwarf. Now the dwarf has this ability that he can buy strength at space 71, which is where he is, the mine, for one gold. So he's going to spend all five gold he got at the start of the game, and that's going to put him to seven, because he starts at two. And that's pretty much his turn. Now remember, we're going in round order. It's now Fen's turn, so he's going to go one hour. And what we're looking at here is we've, we've got to try and... We don't want to kill too much, okay? Because basically, there's a lot of bad events at the start. So we can basically kill one monster. We don't want to kill two monsters because then this star token will, will uh, trigger before the sunrise. So if we can if we can only get get away with killing one monster... The monster movement phase, which happens during the sunrise box, will not affect the monsters coming out of the star token because the moving the narration is at the end after monster movement has completed. So it's much better for monsters to be placed on the board through the sunrise box than through artificially advancing the, the token. So if we look over here... We can basically see we've got two turns before people start getting to our castle. So 20 is going to, 19 is going to move to 3, and 20 is going to move to 1, 21 is going to move to 4, and 8 is going to move to 7. So we've got one whole turn. So if we can just take one of these guys out, we'll be fine. The other thing we want to do is get this peasant into the castle. Now the peasant, once you get the peasant into the castle, he joins the militia and we get an extra shield token revealed which is awesome. But the rules are any time a peasant shares a space with a monster, even if he's being escorted, he instantly gets discarded. So 
this wall of monsters here is the problem. So we're going to take these guys out. So we spent our one movement and I'm just going to move friend up here into 21 and we can kill that. And that's going to leave a path like this into the castle. What was I saying? We've moved. Now, monsters do not attack until after the players initiate combat. So they never attack unless we actually ask them to. Right, next person up is the mage. Now, the mage is going to spend his hour to summon and activate the water spirit, which gives it four movements. So that's one, two, three, four. Send that to the same location. Now, the water spirit basically acts the same as a ally. So you have these standard actions. You can move, attack, or you can pass. They're kind of like the standard actions. So the water spirit functions like the move ally action, which is another standard action. So it takes up your turn, basically. Which means that Keelan can be really, really slow because half the time he's moving the water spirit instead of himself which is fine because the water spirit's kind of good. Okay, so anyway, so he's done that. And now it is the mage's turn. The mage is going to go one, two, three. One, two, three. Into that same area. Okay, now the dwarf is going to pass. He goes onto the, you know, the cockatoo space or whatever it's called. And then... Fen is going to activate for a combat... For one hour and we're also going to activate the mage to assist him so he spends an hour as well okay so combat works pretty simply you just have to roll two dice in this particular case and i think we're going to keep the five we have a the mage allows us to sort of fiddle with things so we've got a five and because the water spirit is at the location one of the heroes at the location can choose to roll the water die instead of his own die. So the water die works really, really well with Arara. Okay, so let's, uh, your blammo. Five. Okay, so the opposite of the five is the two, which is actually a six. And that's what her ability does. It just means that she can flip a flip a result around and you, it's very easy to tell what the result's going to be because you just add it up to seven so we rolled and basically if you can see the mouse over the mouse over actually is showing what the original d6 would say so it's saying a two and what we originally rolled was the five point is we rolled an 11 plus two strength for friend and two strength for Irara. So that's another four. That's 15. Now we're fighting uh, Gore, which has two strength. So the highest possible strength that a Gore can have is eight, six plus two. And because we've rolled 15 and he only has four health, anything higher than a 12 is an instant kill. So I'm not even gonna bother rolling for this guy. Boom, he's dead, and boom, this goes up one. This little icon to remind you to move the narrator. Okay, and when you beat someone, you get the choice of taking a combination up to two. So you can either have two will or two gold, or in this case, which is two, like this guy's six, right? But the point is you can have any combination as long as it adds up to two. So I could take one will, one gold. I'm going to take two gold and send that to the mage. Right. Now it is actually Keelan's turn. Uh, actually, you know what I'm going to do? It's still friend's turn and he's going to activate his hawk. Now this allows us to peek at any location once a day any face down token. So let's have a look at this one. Okay, so that's a coin. So what are we gonna do with this guy? Yeah, he's gonna go one, two, three. One, two, three. And pick up the peasant. 
and now it is the wizard's turn and she's going to go one two three to the little encampment here and that's uh that icon there says that we can access the merchants which is what we're going to do and all the stuff here is two bucks except for this witch's brew which is five gold and you can only buy it from the witch and there's two things that i like to have the falcon is extremely strong it allows you to very easily collect the black dye you know runestone stuff so it's a it's a very very strong like device basically allows you to trade with people anywhere on the map and it's multiple uses so you just flip it over and then it flips flips over you know when it's back you know what i mean and you can use it once a day it's very very strong but what I actually prefer to buy is a shield because the shield, like the Falcon is really handy, but the shield will stop you losing the game because the shield allows you to cancel uh, events because any event that comes out that's got a shield on it, you can use the shield twice before it gets destroyed and it'll cancel the event. So I'm going to buy a shield, but a more correct choice, like I think if you're thinking min maxing is actually the, the hawk for this scenario. Okay. And that was three movement, wasn't it? So that is one, two, three. You know what I need to do? I need to, I need to put a different cult, different marker on each side. So after I move him, I can tap them just so I know, which ones I've moved. Okay, so purple's gone. That means it's the dwarf again. So he uh, has finished. So we're back to this bloke. So what are we gonna do with here? We can't kill anybody else. I think he's just gonna go one movement and flip this. That'll give him one, two, three from the well. And then this guy's going to go one, two, three, one, two, three, and he's now in the castle. So let's move the peasant up there. Beautiful. Okay. The purple is going to pass and now it's this bloke's go again. So he's going to go one, two and flip this. Oh, plus two stuff. So that's one, two. Remember, we're looking for the, uh, we're looking for the, the witch in these areas somewhere. Then this guy is going to disappear. Then he's going to go one. Flip this one. And there's the witch. Wow, that was easy. Beautiful. Okay, so we have found the witch. So now we activate this card. Yoink! Finally, one of the heroes managed to discover Rika, the witch amid the misty riverbank. Basically, he, re he receives a witch's brew for free, which is going to be very handy. And then we roll a die and we place the herbs in a certain location. So we rolled a four, which means the herb and the gore goes in space 61, which is not a good spot. Spot That 61 is like right over here somewhere. There it is. So that's the gore and the herb. So we've got to get all the way over there and then get it all the way back. Again, be very, very handy to have that hawk. Okay, fine. Now everyone else has passed. He's gonna use one more to move here to intercept this monster at the end of the day. Okay, and then he's gonna pass as well. So that was a very, very good opening hand, uh, picking up the witch. Right, so first thing we do now is reveal an event. So let's draw. 
Merchant ship reaches Andor's coast. A hero who occupies or enters space 9 by two strength points for two gold. This card remains in 9 until it, make, it happens. So where is 9? Oh, 9 is right up here. Right next to our hero. That's handy. That is definitely 9, yep. Sweet. And now all the monsters move. So 48 moves to 16... 20 moves to 3, 19, uh, sorry, 19 moves to 3, 20 moves to 1. So you move from lowest first, and if there's ever a monster in the space, the next monster sort of goes to the next one. So 19 moves, then 20 moves. Oops, there's someone there, and that's at 1. And this guy moves to 25. So that's that, and now we refresh the well. There is a well to refresh. And this thing moves up one more, and we activate C. The King's Scouts discover the Skrull Fortress. Okay, so this is basically saying roll a die, add 50 to it, and put the fortress there. Locked. Let's just go. Your blammo rolled. So we get a 1 plus 50 is 51. So that means it goes here. And we have to place a scroll on top. Now, this bit is the killer. We're playing four heroes, so he has a strength of 40 to represent that fortified castle. So I've, I've put a mark on the map here to remind me. So that's how strong he is. And that's quite huge. I mean... We had 14 strength when we fought that first monster. So we need 40 strength before we can even kill him. So basically, we have to be able to produce more than 46 strength because uh, he has 6 strength himself. The scroll does it, you know. So we've got to produce at least 46 strength. Defeat the scroll on the tower. After he is defeated, immediately advance the legend marker to end. So we need to do all the herb stuff before we go for the tower. And there is more disturbing news. Rumours of war docks approaching from the south. They have not been sighted, but more farmers are requesting asylum in the castle walls. Place a farmer at 28, which is down here. Okay, C2. Place a gore in 27 and 31, and a scroll in 39. So that is 27... And 31, and a scroll in 29. Bam. It's really hard to find the numbers sometimes. I actually wrote a little tool to help you out. So if you like, just type in 61, it'll fly over and find it. Because sometimes it's really hard to find things, find the numbers, because they're not in sequential order. It's just such a craziness. Okay, the place the prince at the 72 in the tavern. Yoink. Nice. The prince is out. Now, the prince acts just like the water spirit. You can use the move ally function instead of your normal standard action, and he just adds plus four strength to whatever. But don't get excited. He can't help us with the scroll because he's pretty transitory. He runs away pretty soon. So he's the same. He can move uh, four spaces. Okay, legend objective. The party wins a legend if the legend marker reaches the letter N on the legend track and the following conditions are met. The medical herb is in space zero, the castle is not overrun, and the scroll in the tower is defeated. So that's what we need to get done. So we're pretty ready to go. There's one more token that brings out some more monsters, and this is the star token for the runes, which also brings out monsters. So we will, we basically have to, uh, I don't think I moved this guy. He's supposed to be here. Fuse myself for a sec. Yeah, I did move the gore from here into here during the movement phase. So we've only got two spots and we have two war docks coming. Okay, so that is the end of the turn and I will see you guys next time.